I mean, now is an environmental advocate and co-founder of Rethinking Cities, uh, Deji Akinpelu. Uh, Deji, good to see you and thanks uh, for your time. Uh, looking at the habitat, uh, UN Habitat document for 2017 uh, to 2021, uh, it puts the proportion of urban residents who live in slums in Nigeria at 69%, uh, with statistics across other African countries also of concern. Uh, help us make sense of this. How can this figure be drastically reduced? Yeah, um, thank you for having me. Um, I hope you can hear me clearly. Yes, I can. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you for having me once again. Uh, yeah, so the, the, the statistics is very accurate. That's one statistic that we've been working with, um, 69 to 70% of, for instance, uh, people who live in the city of Lagos, for instance, live in uh, slums and informal settlements across the state. And um, that is also where we advocate that policy, housing policy of a state like a city like Lagos should be directed towards solving that um, the need in that um, particular um, population range. So when you hear people say, oh, we have a plan for affordable housing, so the question is affordable housing for who? So all the housing projects that we've seen in the city, one of Africa's mega cities, which is Lagos, uh, is we've seen some housing projects and you begin to question, are these housing projects really targeted at solving this uh, demography that uh, you have mentioned? Uh, we need to begin to take the lead great steps towards um, turning around this situation. And one of such would be uh, we deliberately following some policies such as uh, uh, land rights. Land rights is one of the first things that uh, um, the people who live in these areas uh, are challenged with. Um, so they don't have your popular or what you call your C of O. So the right of occupancy. We have to look at land rights. First of all, how can we get land rights for this set of people? Secondly, how can we now help them to build their houses within, rebuild their communities within their own income bracket. I know um, policy makers and government officials have spoken in times past saying government cannot deliver housing below market, uh, prevailing market price. That is not very correct. We can actually provide um, social housing for this group of people by pulling funds together that will make um, institute housing projects in these areas possible. Um, take, for instance, there's no big deal. Uh, if you are building your house in um, Banana Island, I don't have a problem with that. Uh, if you are building a house in the Atlantic, there's no problem with that. But there's something called the principle of cross-funding. Can we take funds from houses built in luxury areas to actually do social housing in okay. poor areas. Uh, uh, Deji, let, me, let me jump in here, Deji. Now that you've uh, given some okay. key solutions to some of these things, uh, let's go back to the theme uh, and perhaps uh, make sense of uh, what uh, this is about. Uh, mind the gap, leave no one, yeah. and place behind. Uh, what does this mean for the African continent? Yeah, that, 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 that's a very, very, that's the same thing I'm speaking to. Leave no one behind. What we have been doing with our housing policy with a city like Lagos, we are leaving a lot of people. We've, we are leaving the majority of the people behind. Yeah, when you look at Lagoons, um, the houses that the state government is building, um, the, co the collaboration and cooperation between the state government and real estate developers, <laughs> the, the kind of prices that you have that run into several millions, uh, it doesn't speak to the people that you have profiled in your short report before now. So there has to be a deliberate attempt. You know, this is election period and our own organization, we are asking um, politicians, when you say affordable housing, affordable housing for who? We want it directed at this 60 to 70% of the people that you already spoke about who live in this slum areas. These people are definitely being left behind. Many years ago, I was part of the, um, um, the team um, advocating for the rights of the people of Otodog Bame that were forcefully evicted from um, um, be just behind uh, Lekki, uh, uh, around Lekki Axis. 
that's why there was a country injunction. So we are so vexated on luxury housing that we are, we are building a lot of luxury housing um, for people, but the urban poor is being clearly left behind. That is the situation for Africa. And um, our politicians are not speaking to the issues of uh, social housing. So you, you, you can't build and suit rooms, room, houses that run into millions, and you say you are building for the urban poor. All right, no, Dejia, I'd like to thank you and your delicious. team for so, speaking on this and uh, more. Uh, thank you, Dejia Kingpello, for speaking with us. Thank you.